Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Craig Sears, who is KQ4SID. And he's been working with the ARRL antenna kit, which is an end fed dipole. Now you can end feed it and use the supplied wire for 40, 20, 15, and 10. Or you can extend the wire out to about 135 feet, something like that. You'll have to experiment. And the antenna will also work on a small portion of 80 meters. Now, there is only one way to tune an end-fed half-wave dipole, and that is by lengthening it or shortening it. That's it. You can't adjust each band simply. So if you're using a standard end-fed half-wave dipole like the one from the league that has the 49 to 1 ballon in it and that little tiny capacitor, you will find that you'll have to tune the 80 meters way down toward the bottom of the band. Now that's good because you can do FT8 there, okay, or CW or something like that. But 3550, tuning it up around that point, you'll have to forget voice on 80 meter band because it just, if you tune it for that, all the other bands will be totally whacked out okay so that's why you have to tune it so low now there is a fix where if you've got some favorite nets you'd like to be on you can put the fix which consists of a high voltage capacitor 10 20 picofarads or so in line in the middle of the antenna I actually tried this we did a video about this and yes it does pull the low end of the frequency up into the voice band and then leaves the rest of the bands alone. I would not recommend that until you've actually got this thing tuned. Now, he's got a budget station. He has a Yaesu FT840 that does not have an antenna tuner unit, which is how most radios were sold up until just a few years ago. Now, he picked up an MFJ 949 external tuner at a ham fest, and he's now talking about problems with that, how he's getting some inconsistencies and stuff. Open up the antenna tuner, take the cover off, you know, put a little ball so you won't lose screws rolling everywhere. And check that thing, because if it's used, and the way you're describing what's going on in here, there could be anything going on inside that antenna tuner. Now, I have an antenna tuner from MFJ that's going to look a lot like the one you've got. It's just two capacitors and an inductor, and it's got a switch. There could be something wrong with the switch. Remember, the way you tune this is to tune for max noise with the inductor and then tweak the capacitors, which you've said about midpoint, tweak them until you get the best signal. It'll be rare that you'll have to adjust the inductor uh, pretty much max noise on the band, and then you transmit and can tune it. Now, here's the deal, okay? You said, I have 50 feet of LMR 400, that's good coax. Double check to make sure that there's no opens or shorts on that, because there can be. If you put a conventional connector rather than a times microwave connector on it, there is a very real possibility of a short or an open and that can cause your SWR to just fly all over the place. So now the uh, coax starts to radiate and that can really confuse things. Okay, the NFED half wave is about 25 feet in the air. It's about high, how high mine is. The active antenna I've got up right now is the ARRL NFED half wave antenna that's been stretched to 80. In order to get it to tune with the current tuner, I had to reduce the wire length to about 55 feet. Okay, that would be 40 meters. That's the resonant length on 40 meters. So if you're trying to tune into that with 80 meters, you're way off and you won't get, a, won't get tuned. You may get something that looks like a tune for a little bit, but it won't be a good tune never been able to get 10 or 15 meters to tune. I can get 17 and sometimes 12. Okay, if you've shortened it to the 66 feet or 55 feet that you say you have, you're doing just 40 through 10, okay? You must tune it 
so that the tuner tunes 40 meters right toward the bottom of the band because it's the harmonics it's going to pick up. The bottoms of the bands are at harmonic intervals, 7 megahertz, 14 megahertz, 21 megahertz, 28 megahertz. Now those are all at the bottom of the band. Now the antenna has a low enough Q that it will probably operate across the entire band. But once you get 40 tuned in, they all should work. And if you want, you can use your tuner to touch them up. The tuner that you've opened up made sure there are no lightning sparks between coils. That's what mine has. Uh, between the two plates of the capacitor, there's a spot where it arced over. So anytime I go past that spot, I get a little click. I tried to file it off once, was pretty successful. You tune it down toward the bottom of that. The other band should fall in place. Remember, you've only got one adjustment, and that's the length. All the others should fall in place, but you got to tune that 40 down toward the bottom. Now, it'll probably still cover the top of 40 with less than a 3 to 1 SWR. That's where you bring your antenna tuner in. And by the time you get up to 10, you're not going to cover all of 10. You're going to cover like 28 to 28.7 or something like that. Okay, that's pretty broad up there. Uh, it says, never been able to get 10 or 15 to tune. I can get 17 and sometimes 12. Now, don't forget that that MFJ949 external tuner is a wide range tuner. You could probably tune your coax into a set of bed springs and have it work with a tuner that can cover a bandwidth that high or an SWR that high. 10 to 1 SWR and it'll tune it. Now, if you've got 10 to 1 SWR, you need to be doing some antenna work. Make sure that you have, when you constructed the ARRL, because it comes as a kit, when you constructed that, double, triple check it that you've got it right. And it should work on all of those. He asks, what am I doing wrong? I don't know what you're doing wrong, if anything. I suspect what you're doing wrong is you're tuning the low end of the antenna not for the low end of 40, but somewhere in the middle of 40, which will throw 20 out, throw 15 out, 10 will move it up in the band. So give it a try, see what you can. I am using right now as we speak, the ARRL NFED half wave, and it works great. I've got it on a little whisper transmitter here, and it's putting out 200 milliwatts, less than a watt, less than a little LED's worth of light and it's getting around the world. I'm getting Australia, I'm getting Africa, of course, all over Europe, and uh, the European part of the Soviet Union, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, and so on. It just, wow, it's being heard all over the place. It's an amazing antenna, identical antenna to what you're working with there. So I hope that helps. Let me know if it does. Now you can run if you've got the whole antenna 25 feet in the air, like I do, that should run fine. A sloper like that, that should work fine. But if you just have the one pole, I'd put that in the middle, run it as an inverted V, keep the ends up high enough so that people don't run into them. Okay, there you have it. So until we next meet, 73.